Now look, right, um, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos, right? Um, you, if y'all ever search it up, it's a guy named Van Valian, right? Um, so pretty much he exposed us, like, you know, sovereign citizens, uh, American nationals, nationals, Moorish Americans. So all the videos that he posts, he posts us getting arrested, thrown out the car, snatched, beat, um, you know, handcuffed, arrested, you know, taken in, car repossessed, not repossessed, I mean, uh, told, um, and everything, right? So I'm gonna start responding to a lot of those videos, right? I'm personally gonna be like, you know, I'm gonna go over the video, like other people who get caught up, right? And um, I'm pretty much gonna analyze the video and I'm personally gonna tell you what happened and what went wrong. Um, because many people who are under the perspective of being sovereign, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Most gurus who teach y'all, and also most people y'all see on TV, all of them have contracts with the state. I know I, I know it sounds crazy, but most people do. And it's because some people don't even believe the shit that they teach. Some people in it just a little bit. So even if they get in trouble, the people who guru is gonna be like this, um, like, man, you should have filed a bond against yourself or you should have did this. You should have filed the strong man notice. But in reality, they really don't have a genuine answer for you, right? Like I tell you, my perspective on the whole thing is I won't challenge the jurisdiction. I'll get out of it because once you get out of it, you don't have to worry about playing the game. You don't have to worry about going to court with a 1099 C or you don't have to go to worry about going to court with an assumed name or making a special appearance or doing anything like that because once you operate really in your, in your proper status, you wouldn't have to worry about jurisdiction, jurisdiction. And many people don't even know about jurisdiction. And I'm talking about full fledged because if you know about jurisdiction, you would know the only thing that's binding you in today, jurisdiction is contract. And that's why when I sat back and I told the officer, I said, hey, I have no contracts in the state of Illinois. It was a reason why they didn't refute anything I said. It wasn't like they were saying, oh, you're lying or you're wrong or that's not true. You want me to tell you why they didn't say that? Because they knew it's true. And I also told them I would not give you guys a contractual waiver. A contractual waiver is you running your mouth telling them where you live. A contractual waiver is giving them some form of jurisdiction where they can tie you in and pretty much make the arrest. So it's a lot of things that a lot of people who sovereign go wrong because they don't they haven't got the full guidance of this. So they might read read a look a lot of case laws and they might interpret it a certain type of way. They might say, well, the Supreme Court ruled on this, or the Supreme Court ruled on that. Do you think the the local county clerk judge followed the ruling of the Supreme Court? Do you think a federal judge follows the ruling of, of the Supreme Court? No. They follow admiralty law, administrative law, a quasi-jurisdiction, right? So they operate strictly on who doing business with them and who and who's not doing business with them. You know, and they just assume many people are doing business with them just because you have that ID, just because you have that driver's license, just because you have that registration. So now we can make an assumption. Oh, I, we know we had, like, we assume we had jurisdiction. You were driving a car on our public roadways. That's not jurisdiction. Jurisdiction has to be proven, but jurisdiction is so easily proven, especially when they run into people who don't understand it. So when they run into a normal person who claim to be a sovereign, oh, they can easily get him. They can just see him. He, he talk crazy, pull him out the car, throw him on the ground, arrest him, impound the car, take him to jail. And so he go to court, say, Your Honor, I'm a, I'm a, a live flesh and blood man. That's not even how you challenge jurisdiction. That's not how you even come at it when, when challenging the court's jurisdiction. So that's why I was telling you guys, I'm like, hey, before you guys exercise your constitutional rights, you want to make sure that you are outside of jurisdiction. You want to make sure you have no contracts with the state. Because when you read a lot of criminal complaints and a lot of criminal citations, before they charge charge you with a criminal lawsuit, which is a criminal charge, they have to find some form of evidence that places you in their territorial boundaries in order for you to, um, in order for them to continue the proceedings. If you're an out-of-state resident, it's something called the Long Arm Act. This is what they use against out-of-state residents who confess with their mouth that they live out-of-state and they give up a fictitious address. 
as long as you live in any of the ter federal territories of USDC, this is where they can uh, grab you. This is how they can get you. And I know a lot of people might say, what if I live in Japan or anything like that? You pretty much don't want to give them no territorial boundaries other than the fact that you just live here in America. Living here simply in America can pull you out of jurisdiction. I'm going to tell you why. In the Constitution, we have something called due process. Due process, I want to say, is that like Fifth Amendment right? Something like that, right? In the due process in the Constitution, the courts must establish jurisdiction based upon minimum contacts, which is jurisdiction. Minimum contacts is all the things that you might have in a connection with a specific or certain state. So when you see a lot of people who sovereigns or sovereign citizens or Moors, and the reason why they fail is not even because a lot of people being violated based upon their nationality. You got a lot of people say, I'm Moorish American and I want to exercise my liberty, but they are attacking me as a Moorish American. No, they are attacking Moorish Americans because Moorish Americans have contracts with the state that they live in instead of operating strictly in Morocco. So if you if you claim that America's Morocco, which is you true, which are which you true about a lot of things that they say, they're hundred percent true. But why do you have a fictitious address on your nationality card? That's number one. Number two, why do most people have CDL driver's license if they claim to be a private resident? Because I understand where you guys are coming from, but when y'all argue, hey, this is uh only used for commerce, listen. Any identification that the state give you is not just identification. I hate people misinterpret that. It's a damn contract. Why do you think when the police pulled me over, they say, uh, what they what they say? They say, hey, sir, you got any other ID, valid ID other than a passport? Listen, isn't a passport a valid ID? Isn't a passport a valid ID? Yeah, but why is they asking any other valid ID? You want me to tell you why? because the police is trying to gain jurisdiction. And that's what y'all not understanding. So forget the nationality part first. Forget constitutional rights first. Forget all of those things first and start thinking only about jurisdiction. And once you understand jurisdiction, now exercising your right as a more is gonna be very sufficient. Because I'm gonna tell you this, I know some mores right now that I've seen on YouTube he had his flag and everything, but he had no contracts in the state of Maryland. He said, nothing y'all can do to me. He had no registration. He had no state ID. He had no license. He had none of that. And he was exercising his right. He was doing whatever he wanted to do. And he really was a moor. He truly was a moor. And I see most of the moors who got contracts. They might work somewhere and that requires them to have a state ID. Uh -uh. You want to be sovereign, right? So when you sovereign, you got to go all the way. Ain't no, oh, I got to get a state ID just to get a job. No, no, no. If you want to be sovereign, you got to be an entrepreneur. If you want to be sovereign, you can be a fisherman. If you want to be sovereign, you can be a private truck driver. So a lot of people are sovereign, you can build up your credit. You can get an 18 wheeler and you can be traveling to private and you can get insurance that requires for you to use an international license. And you can put that insurance on your truck and you can drive the trucks around. You can be a fisherman where you can, you know, fish, whatever you're going to catch in the sea. And you can pretty much, you can sell it to uh, farming markets. Um, you can also cook food. You can go like, um, you know, to your city downtown, you go to festivals or whatever. You can start to a restaurant. You can do a million things to make money, especially when you're talking about we moving into this lane. Because moving into this lane, it's a lot of things we couldn't do in the public. I couldn't be a police officer. I couldn't be um, a, a, work, a teller at the bank because they might say, hey, we require, require a state ID. I don't want to use a state ID. So that's what they're going to say. By you, uh, by us not having, by you not having a state ID, we can accept your employment because it's a state requirement. That's the thing. So you want to make sure that you're straight all the way. You wanna, you wanna really know how to live in the private. So, for that being said, peace and love. I'm out. Don't make no mistakes.